Hello and welcome back to the Old Soul Millennial channel. In today's video, I would like to teach you how to measure, calculate, and lay out the dimensions for your own custom stairway stringers. Now, first thing I want to get out of the way is that I'm not a design professional. Before you attempt a project like this, please consult with your local building department. You may need a permit, you may need a set of approved plans, so just ensure that whatever you build is to your local codes, laws, and regulations. I'm, of course, not liable for whatever you build. So with that out of the way, I want to share with you my situation here. So this is my side porch that I've been working on restoring for the past couple weeks now. The house was built in the 90s. Uh, reason I'm restoring it is because the old steps were laid directly on the dirt. The stringers started to rot. The railing started to rot. Just everything was all rickety. It just wasn't safe. So I decided to rip it all out and start with a fresh slate. Now, a couple things that I've done thus far, I've laid a nice solid concrete slab, which is pitched away from the house. And when rain falls on this slab, that rainwater and moisture will go away from the house. And a second thing I've done is I've added an extension to my rim joist. So this is the main rim joist, and this is my rim joist extension. So behind here, I have a couple of pressure treated four by fours. And these, well, the rim joist extension is attached to that pressure treated four by four with five and a inch five and a half inch long Simpson structural screws. If you've never tried them before, they are absolutely incredible, extremely strong, expensive, but totally worth it. And then additionally, there is some lateral bracing from the four by fours back to the foundation of the house. So I have a really strong spot to secure my stringers to, and I have a really nice, properly pitched solid foundation for these stringers to sit on. So once I construct this, this should last for many, many years. And additionally, Stringers should definitely be pressure treated wood as well. But first question I want to answer is, you know, you go to the big box stores and you see that they normally have pre-cut stringers. Can you just use those? Well, maybe you can, but chances are if you're working with something like this where you're trying to reconstruct what was there originally, chances are that won't work. If you want to play it safe, you're going to have to cut your own stringers. I've been working on these instructions all morning, so this video should prove to be very helpful. We'll go over all the dimensions and measurements that you need to take in order to properly calculate uh, these stringers. So the first two measurements that we need are the total run and the total rise. So the two spots we're going to be measuring from are the top face front edge of the concrete, so right here, and the other spot we're going to be measuring from is at the top of the rim joist, underneath the decking back here. So. First thing I figure we'll measure, we'll measure the total run, and that's gonna be from the rim joist here to the front of the concrete pad. I'm gonna take my level, put it against the face of the concrete, ensuring that the bubble is in the middle of the two lines. I'm gonna take my tape measure, and on the same side of the level that's resting on the face of the concrete, I'm gonna take a measurement off the rim joist here to see what that measurement is so I'm getting 19 inches so that tells me my total run is 19 inches we're gonna take our level I'm gonna put it on the underside of the decking like so ensuring that the level is level take a measurement off the face the top face of the concrete and I am getting 23 and a half inches so my total run is 19 inches, and my total rise is 23 and a half inches. All right, I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. So what we're gonna need, we're gonna need four measurements. First thing we're gonna need to figure out is what we want our step height to be. Something that you wanna be careful of though and pay attention to is the thickness of your step boards and the thickness of the decking on top of the rim joist. I'm pretty sure most codes say that the difference in step height can be no more than three-eighths of an inch. So if that is in fact the case in your local jurisdiction, just be careful and ensure that the step boards are within three-eighths of an inch thickness of the decking, if that makes sense. So anyway, our step height is eight inches. Next thing we need to calculate is what our step board width is. So in my case, I'm going to have two step boards side by side and their total width is 11 inches. Pretty simple. Next thing we need to measure is our kickboard thickness. And these are the kickboards. They sit on top of the step boards and they get screwed to the vertical face of the stringers. So the kickboards 
in my case, they're going to be a half inch thick and they are going to be plastic. I recommend you go with the plastic stuff. Uh, try and avoid the wood stuff because you, you'll just end up replacing it, you know, 10 years down the road. The plastic lasts a lifetime. And the final measurement we're going to need to figure out is what we want our step board overhang to be. So see, we have our step boards. How much do we want that to overhang the kickboards? In my case, I want it to be one inch. Now that we have those measurements out of the way, now we need to do a few simple calculations. But first things first, because we know our step height is going to be 8 inches, we know our rise is going to be 8 inches. So remember that number, 8 inches, because we're going to use that very shortly here. Now to calculate the run, which the run is going to be from this black line to this black line right here, what we need to do is we need to subtract the kickboard thickness, which is a half inch, and then we also need to subtract the desired step board overhang. So this is the step board overhang in blue right here. So we have the kickboard thickness, half inch, and overhang thickness, one inch. So from our step board width, 11 inches, we're gonna subtract an inch and a half, and that tells us that our run will be nine and a half inches. So from this black line to this black line will be nine and a half inches. So now we have our two critical numbers, which is eight inches and nine and a half. Earlier we measured our total rise. Our total rise is a measurement from the concrete pad to our rim joists. Uh, the top of the rim joists are underside of the decking. So the total rise is 23.5 inches. And a moment ago we also determined that we want each individual step to have a rise of eight inches. So what we need to do now is determine how many times eight goes into 23.5. Now you do not want to divide this. If I divided 23.5 by 8, it would give me 2.9. We do not want this in decimal form. We want this to remain in inches. Everything is in inches right now. So the easiest way to determine how many times 8 goes into 23.5 is simply to subtract 8 inches, uh, one 8 inch measurement at a time. So we have 23.5 minus 8. That's our first. That'll give us 15.5. Now we take 15.5 minus 8, that'll be our second, leaves us with 7.5, and we can't subtract 8 from 7.5 because it would leave us with a negative number. So we've determined 1, 2, 3. Now if you look at this drawing over here, this will kind of hopefully put it all together. So this is the rim joist right here, this is the decking. So from the top of the rim joist, underside of the decking, down to the top of the first step on the stringer, that's going to be 8 inches. Then the second step on the stringer is going to be 8 inches. Then the final step is going to be 7.5 inches. So if we add these all up, 8, 16, 23.5. So these three measurements give us our total rise, so that is properly calculated. Now the other question you may have is, what about our run? Well, earlier we determined that our run is going to be 9.5 inches, and that's going to stay consistent. You're going to have 9.5 inches here and 9.5 inches here. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go over to a pressure treated two by 12 and let's lay this out. So essentially this is the piece we're gonna be making right here. Nine and a half inches, nine and a half inches. So those are our two runs. Then we have an eight inch rise and a seven and a half inch rise. Now a question you may be asking yourself is, well, your total rise is 23.5 inches. You only have 15.5 inches between these two rises right here. What about the last eight inches? Well, if you take a look at this diagram right here, this should answer your question. So the final eight inches of rise is gonna be achieved by the pre-existing rim joist. So pretty simple. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to measure this out utilizing a framing square. Now, uh, my piece of two by 12 is not large enough for me to show you on, so I'm just gonna show you on this piece of plywood, but it's, it's really simple. You should have no problems with this. So utilizing my framing square, because my rise is going to be 8 inches, I'm looking for 8 inches, and then my run is going to be 9.5 inches, so I'm going to be looking for this mark right here. I'm going to take my framing square, start in an upper corner. So this is going to be lined up on the 8, and then this is going to be 9.5 inches. So that will give me the proper angle. And they do make little screw tabs that kind of screw and hold your square in place. I don't have those, so I'm just gonna work with what I have. So eight, nine and a half inches, we'll mark that out. And we'll do the same thing again. Eight inches on this mark, 
and nine and a half inches on the edge of the board here. And then one more time. You remember, this is only gonna be seven and a half inches. So what we can actually do, we can actually mark off seven and a half inches, right? Because this is eight inches. So we're gonna actually, from this line, measure back up a half inch. So this is actually seven and a half inches. So we can use that later. Now we need to get a parallel line from this seven and a half inch mark to this line right here. How do you do that? Well, you could take the square and you could work it this way, but a much better way, a more accurate way, is just repeat what we were doing. So we were using eight and nine and a half inches. So simply go to the other edge of the board, go to your eight and nine and a half inches and slide that down that lines up with that seven and a half inch mark that we made earlier and you can scribe this line. Now we have a bottom rise of seven and a half inches. Now for this top line right here this should be nine and a half inches and what I need to do I need to scribe a line coming down this way. And another easy way to scribe that line down is to simply use the same measurements that we've been using. So I'm going to use eight then nine and a half and we'll line everything up. Just scribe this line down. You know that this is an excess, 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 and this is going to be our stringer. Now this piece of plywood is wider than a normal 2x12. It's actually 14 and a half inches, so I actually drew this line right here to represent what the dimensions of a nominal 2x12 would look like. Now this is one of the 2x12 stringers that I cut out yesterday. Now let's take this piece over to that piece of plywood and let's see if it matches the lines I just scribed out. And there is the 2x12 we just had on our hands laid out over the lines we just scribed in the plywood and it's pretty well a perfect match. I will say I did have a little bit of trouble cutting these 2x12s and that's why they may look like they're slightly off from the lines. What I learned is that these pressure treated 2x12s, if they're extremely waterlogged, Avoid using the skill saw. Go ahead and use a jigsaw. You'll thank me later. My skill saw was jamming up in there and I was just having a hell of a time, but jigsaw will work much better. So anyway, with that being said, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully this video was helpful and as always, I will catch you on the next one.